Just outside Newport city centre stands a unique building. It's derelict at the moment, but the copper dome long since turned green and its neoclassical pillars still rise up grandly above the more recent buildings. It began life at the beginning of last century when it was built as a technical institute, transforming into the College of Art in 1958. But this was no ordinary college. It had an international reputation in art and design and later photography, filmmaking and fashion. Those courses still run at the University of Wales in Newport, which was formed from a merger of this college with two others. But sadly, since 1996, the building here in Clarence Place has lain empty. I don't think it's much of an exaggeration to say that there was a time in the early 1970s when this building was something of a surprising cultural mecca. Well, I'm going to try to recreate a sense of that time with the help of some of those who were here then. Richard Frame is the director of Newport Action for the Single Homeless, uh, an organisation that operates here in the city. But Richard, you were one of the students that were attending the college at the time we were talking about, weren't you? That's right, in the early 70s I came here, I uh, did my foundation in Cardiff and then I had to go on to do three years in another college and this was my last choice. I didn't want to come to Newport, it was a place where everybody went who couldn't get in anywhere else. So I arrived here in the 70s in a way hoping I wouldn't get here but ended up spending three of the most happiest years of my life and ended up living in Newport as a result of it. And joining you is David Hearn for 30 or more years, an internationally successful photographer with the Magnum Agency. David, what was your connection with this college? Well, I came here in 73 almost by mistake. Um, I was kind of semi-conned in, into applying for a post to set up a photography course here and initially I was just going to stay for a couple of years you know but I must say I loved it, it it's um, when I first arrived it, it had everything about the sort of romantic art college that one had heard of you know they had a Christmas pantomime and they had an arts ball and, and they had all sorts of well-known artists coming here to, to give lectures and everything and um, it was great fun, enormous fun. There's a pattern emerging here, John Selway, a uh, renowned artist. Did you come here by accident as well? No, I came as a 15-year-old, straight out of school, into the art school as then was in 1954. Uh, spent four years here, went to the Royal College, National Service, and came back to lecture in 1964. When was the last time you were inside this building? Uh, I think it was 1991. Would you like to have a look inside now? I sure you would. It takes two men to remove the heavy boards nailed over the grand doorway by the current owners. They're developers with a plan to rejuvenate this building by turning it into luxury flats, which are already oversubscribed. That's for the near future, but for now, there's a shocking sight in store for us. Well, we've just come inside the building. It's totally derelict. All we can see is uh, a burnt out, uh, burnt out windows, burnt out doors, broken glass. What, what, what are your first thoughts? I can't believe it's such a wreck in a sense. It, it's, uh, it, 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 it retains its grandeur because it is structure, but it's just absolutely gone. I mean, it, it, it always amazes me how buildings, if nobody's in them, of their own accord seem to just slowly decay, you, you know, well, quickly decay in this case. Now, it is extraordinary. You, you couldn't believe that that much damage could be done just by the elements, I guess. I hadn't realised just how bad it was until I came inside. I think you can see evidence of that, a lot of graffiti on the walls, and there's obviously been fires around it in a hell of a state, isn't it? As a student, once you've come through those pillars, through these doors, and looked up at the uh, staircase ahead of us, where would you have gone next? Where would be your first port of call uh, as you popped in? Straight ahead into the canteen if it was open to get something to drink or eat. Shall we head in that direction? Go on then. So this is uh, the canteen that Richard said he would have uh, come into as his first port of call. Um, but, uh, John, there's also a, a stage here, so what else was it used for? It was used for uh, pantomimes, uh, plays, uh, uh, lectures uh, given by invited artists or, or musicians or, or poets, people of the calibre of the Amadeus Quartet. We had um, Laurie Anderson, 
Gavin Bryars, who was a contemporary music, uh, composer, still is, uh, ran tutorials here. I remember coming in here, I think it was the second, my second year, we were queuing up in here to uh, register, and as I, t I turned around to look at the people who stood behind me and uh, recognised the face of Linda Keith, who I'd seen earlier that year in a film about Jimi Hendrix, who a number of us were great fans of at the time, Jimi Hendrix, and we couldn't believe, and we checked with her and said, you know, is you Linda Keith and she confirmed it and we got very excited that this uh, very famous person had come to Newport and it turned out that David here on my left David Hearn had been involved in getting her to come to Newport. I had known her um, originally when I was working for Harper's, Harper's magazine doing passion. I, she was one of the models I used and, and um, she was very involved in drug rehabilitation and she and her partner ran in fact something called Phoenix House and they were looking of a way, for a way of um, expanding their interests uh, by the use of photography. So I suggested that they came down and did the course here, and they did. And uh, they later split up, and, and she now lives in um, Hollywood, and uh, I c still keep in touch with her. In fact, I, if I go to Hollywood, that's who I stay with now, you know. It sounds like this place must have had a real, this particular hall must have had a real buzz about it. Is, is that I, your, your <coughs> recollection? Well, it, it did for me because I came from outside as a working photographer. But I loved it because it had that kind of fantasy feel of what you felt an art college ought to be, you, you know. They were having pantomimes, they had arts balls. They were always up to all sorts of mischief in some sort of way, very constructive mischief. And I just also met masses of people. I remember Van Morrison used to come here and, and used to play on the stage.